In the last year or so, it's become almost commonplace to see SpaceX and Blue Origin bringing rockets back after launch for refurbishment and reuse. This has been the goal for billionaires Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos, backed by NASA knowledge for well over a decade now. But over 40 years ago, another man had the same dream of a low-cost reusable rocket that very nearly came to fruition from the unlikely source of a two-car garage in an ordinary Californian suburb and could have made the world-famous daredevil Evil Knievel the world's first private astronaut. That man was Bob Truex, and he was much more than a backyard rocket enthusiast. He had a track record, making a name for himself designing the Thor missile, which would become the basis for the Delta launch family and the Polaris launch system for the US Navy. He's also named on the patent number 3029704 for the steam-powered rocket and launcher, dated April 17, 1962. After leaving the military, he led a team at the American rocketry firm Aerojet, developing the design for the monstrous super heavy lift booster called the Sea Dragon. In 1966, Truax left Aerojet to set up his own company, where he continued to work on reusable rockets. To fund this research, he designed some blisteringly powerful propulsion systems, such as the Thunderbolt steam rocket engine, that created 5,000 pounds of thrust for Walt Arthron's steam drag racer. It was this technology that led him to working with the daredevil Evil Knievel, who was planning to jump across the Snake River Canyon in Idaho on a motorbike with a couple of flimsy wings and a fake rocket motor. The feat seemed like a recipe for certain death, but Truax knew that he could use a steam-powered rocket engine to launch Knievel at terrific speeds high across the canyon. Now, a steam-powered rocket may seem something like the Victorians would have thought of, but it is actually a proven technology that can produce simple, very powerful, yet very cost-effective reusable propulsion systems. Truax sold it to the Daredevil on the wow factor of the rocket, making Knievel the star-spangled rocket man. And sure enough, on September the 8th, 1974, the steam-powered X2 Sky Cycle launched exactly as planned and almost made it, except for the parachute, which deployed early on the ramp, sending Knievel to an embarrassing crash at the bottom of a canyon. As soon as Knievel was pulled from the wreck of the X2, he asked Truax, what else have you got up your sleeve? Truax told Evil Knievel that if he could raise a million dollars, he could make him the world's first private astronaut. The rocket would be called the X-3, a sort of successor to the Sky Cycle, and be capable of launching an everyman astronaut above the Kármán line, 62 miles or 100 kilometers above the Earth. Knievel liked the idea and provided a research grant of $3,000, but soon had to pull out when he was caught up in an expensive lawsuit for attacking his promoter with a baseball bat. Truax needed a new backer and took his X-3, now nicknamed the Volks rocket, to the press. He appeared on Johnny Carson's The Tonight Show and placed two newspaper ads in the Wall Street Journal, one looking for financiers, which read, wanted risky capital for risky project, which not surprisingly went unanswered. The other was for would-be astronauts and read, man or woman interested in becoming the world's first private astronaut must be in reasonably good health and able to produce $100,000 in spendable money. That one had 3,500 responses from all sorts of people, including an airline pilot, an elderly woman, and a Buddy Holly impersonator. For a long time, little in the way of funds came in, but Truax pushed on with what he had, part payments, small donations, and his own passion for the project. Luckily at the time, surplus rocket parts could be found at scrapyards in California, with the Vandenberg Air Force Base being close by. One day, as he was wandering around his favorite rocket parts scrapyard, Truax spotted some Rocketdyne LR-101 Vernier thruster engines, seven of them in all, originally designed for making course corrections on Atlas rockets. These had cost the government millions to develop and $70,000 each to produce but only set him back $25 a piece. Later, he yoked four of them together to be the power behind the X-3. Although the X-3 Volks rocket didn't get off the ground with private money, in 1988, Truax Engineering got the big break they needed, winning a contract with the Naval Research Laboratory of the NRL for a reusable satellite launch system. To fit the NRL specifications, the X-3 
3 was modified to take off from a sea launch like Truax's previous designs for the Sea Dragon. Now with a designation X3A or Sealar for Sea Launch and Recovery, the ramped up project meant that Truax could reassemble his team of engineers. The rocket was scheduled to begin flight tests in 1996, but some amongst Truax's team were less enthusiastic, helping the Navy with a new launch system seemed far from the democratic ambitions of the Volks rocket. In any case, the Navy funding was cut off just a month before the first scheduled flight. Bob Truax died in 2010, age 93, but since his death, some of his ideas have become more widespread and relevant. His simple, scalable and reusable rocket designs were, as it turns out, well ahead of their time. Bob's son, Scott Truax, in particular, felt the call to cure history by proving that the sky cycle would have worked. So, 40 years after Evil Knievel's Snake River Canyon jump, he moved to Twin Falls, Idaho with a mission to build and launch his father's invention once more. Like the X2, Scott Truax's evil spirit was made from the same surplus parts as the original X2. The fuselage was made from a fuel tank from a Grumman Albatross seaplane and the oxygen tank from a B-50 bomber. Inside, the steam was pressurized to 500 psi using a propane boiler from a steam cleaner and as on the original, 10,000 horsepower of thrust was released with nothing more than the lid of a can of dog food. The moment of truth finally arrived on September 16, 2016, when stuntman Eddie Braun strapped himself into the seat at the base of the 10-story ramp. With a rush of steam, the evil spirit soared into a clear blue sky. After 26 seconds of flight and 42 years of history, the bullet-shaped shadow deployed its parachute and touched down in the fields on the other side. As Knievel said in 1974, Bob Truax's inventions are a tough act to follow, but the Snake River Canyon is unlikely to be the last victory to rise from these blueprints. So thanks for watching and I would also like to put out a special thanks to Scott Truax for his invaluable help in not only suggesting but also in helping make this video possible. I would also like to say that this episode's shirt is the Zigzag Trip by Madcap England and is available from atomretro.com with worldwide shipping from here in the UK. Don't forget we also have the Curious Droid Facebook page, the link is in the channel page and I would also like to take time to thank all of our patrons for their ongoing support. And if you are interested in becoming a patron, then you can also find out more by clicking on the link that's now showing. So as always, thanks for watching and please subscribe, rate and share.